Hi, this is end of the year. We don't hold the crystal ball in our hands, but still, we can still talk about what things will look like. So today we have with us Chip Childers, Executive Director of the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Chip, first of all, tell us, what is Cloud Foundry Foundation if you look at it today? Well, the Cloud Foundry Foundation is the home to the open source Cloud Foundry software projects, um, which are a series of projects that aim to make it easy to do software development on top of Kubernetes-based infrastructure. What are your predictions? Yeah, so you know, every time we get to this time of year, uh, sort of the predictions articles start doing their rounds, and uh, and I'm here to do my part and uh, <laughs> and say um, that you know, there's really three predictions that I've got that are um, appropriately uh, tied to what the Cloud Foundry community focuses on and some areas that are tangential to it. Um, and then one that I think is just a little bit more fun, uh, but also pressure, you know, appropriate based on where we are um, today, uh, all of us at home. So the the first one is that um, the the cloud native movement has uh, been very focused on how to help organizations develop software more efficiently, and in, in particular, how to increase the speed of the loop between code production software running and then back get the feedback back and then adjust the software. Um, and so what what I think is really going to start happening in 2021 at a much higher rate than it has been over the last several years, um, and it's been picking up steam, is that we're going to see cloud native development patterns and cloud native software start arriving at edge computing locations. Kubernetes is becoming smaller, or at least there are distributions that have decreased the form factor. And then it's it's presenting an opportunity for a consistent infrastructure API, whether you're talking about data centers, public clouds, or edge computing locations. And kind of that last one is where we're going to see a lot of forward momentum. The second is that you know, digitization of business is not just here to stay, um, but it's, it's now the de facto way that we want to interact with uh, businesses as consumers and how we want to interact with our partners and vendors um, you know, when we're a business. The, the pandemic clearly um, shifted us from a, gee, it would be nice if we went through a digital transformation, it would be nice if we digitized our business um, mode of, of operations for a lot of organizations, to one of uh, it really being this existential issue. If you, if you didn't respond quickly enough, if you didn't come up with alternative ways to uh, service customers, to interact with those customers, you were very likely to have gone out of business over the last several months. And it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's also a permanent change. And so in 2021, even as we emerge from this pandemic, hopefully, um, I, I really believe that there have been some fundamental shifts in consumer expectations and in business-to-business -business interaction expectations that are never going to leave us. The third is around the machine learning space. So machine learning has been picking up steam um, over the last several years. There have been a lot of open source projects. There's been a lot of public cloud providers starting to offer um, you know, machine learning capabilities. What we've seen with most emergent technologies as they reach the point where they could potentially achieve critical mass, the most important thing to occur is that they become more accessible to the average developer. And when I say average, I don't mean average in a negative way. I mean to the masses of developers, the Java developers, the .NET developers that are all over the world um, in all kinds of different organizations. So developer productivity and making it easy for a developer to interact with machine learning models, to create machine learning models, to perhaps even take advantage of machine learning models um, that have been pre-built for you in your code is what's going to take machine learning from a, uh, let's say a hot topic to, this, to a pervasive technology that actually improves the software that we deliver. So those are the three predictions I have that are, that are tied to the, the enterprise. Um, but we're, I'm talking to you from home, you're, you're um, recording at home, and I, I would say we're all spending a lot more time at home. And one of the things that, that, at least for those of us that are privileged enough to be able to do our work from home are, are doing, is that we're spending a lot more time uh, with home technologies, right? Um, you know, behind me, I have a projector set up in my living room to show our own movies, right? Because that's how we do movie night now. Um, and I've always been interested in, in what it was termed smart home technologies. 
the thing is, if you've ever used any of the uh, smart home devices, they are, um, I'd say, both historically and still today, not particularly smart. But a lot of the building blocks are now out in the market, and you can see the industry starting to realize that the connectedness of these devices needs to be more than basic automation, right? Um, so I think that that we'll see in 2021 a dramatic improvement in the likelihood that your, quote, smart home devices are actually going to be smart, are actually going to respond to what you need, um, hopefully in a positive way, predictively. Um, but more importantly, it'll become much more akin to an ambient computing experience where you may not need to go yell at a voice assistant to get the lights to turn on. Um, so that's that's my fourth prediction. A little bit uh, outside the box for uh, enterprise technology, but uh, but one that I think that a lot of us uh, that are, again, fortunate enough to be able to work at home are uh, finding might be interesting to see happen next year. Let's talk about, from the perspective of Cloud Foundry, what will be the focus of Cloud Foundry Foundation in 2021? Sure, I think it gets down to um, you know, a very simple focus. Uh, our community has gone through, for, for those of you that are familiar with it, has gone through a number of changes over the years. Um, but most importantly, you know, 2020 was the year where uh, our whole community and ecosystem embraced um, the new mission of, of focusing on Kubernetes as the the infrastructure abstraction that we needed to, to get our you know great developer experience built on top of. Um, so next year, it's really about reintroducing the, the technology um, as a tool that, that small teams, small organizations, as well as large scale multi-tenant providers can take advantage of to, to stop worrying about infrastructure, to focus on the code that you're trying to you know, use to solve a business problem and uh, make it much easier to iterate faster. So that's, our focus, we're, we're really trying to uh, reintroduce a you know, battle-proven technology um, that sort of embraced a new form factor and has, uh, has a lot of potential to show up in, in new places. Perfect. Chip, thank you for uh, sharing these predictions, and I look forward to seeing you uh, hopefully this year, otherwise next year. Thank you.